The third thing I wish I'd been taught about generosity. You have to decide. You have to decide. It sounds a bit strong. But this point, like the rest, is rooted in our reading. I find this interesting that Paul normally talks to the Corinthians in a very collective way. You, Corinthians, plural. Uh, but in this pas- passage, he narrows it down and addresses each individual Corinthian as having responsibility. He says, verse 7, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. give. In a way, this point follows on from the last point. We can't do something consistently like live a generous lifestyle in the image of a generous God if we have no plan to do so. The things we do consistently shape us far more, far more than the things we do occasionally. Secondly, I think deciding is important because deciding protects us from compulsion or manipulation. More of that in a moment. The thing is, if we've decided something in our hearts, we're not going to be open to manipulation from outside or guilt or shame from inside because we have a plan. And thirdly, deciding means we take ownership. I first um, tried to give in the financial kind when I was 14. I had a paper round and I made £14.50 a week. And so I gave £1.45 to church on a Sunday because that's what I believe was right as I understood it at the time. I wasn't manipulated. I took ownership and I decided based on my love for God and love for church. I made a decision. You need to decide too. And not just about giving to church, but wider. It might be that you decide at this time not to give financially or give in other ways. And that might be because of your financial situation or for other reasons. You're free to decide not to. But I think it's good for us all to decide which way we go, to know why we're doing what we're doing. Not just coasting along, but we need to decide. It's like at our covenant service. Do you remember me saying, uh, we don't slide into covenants, we decide into covenants. I think it's the same with this. You don't slide into a generous lifestyle. You decide into a generous lifestyle. Number four. This is really linked to the last one. Compulsion is a killer. Compulsion is a killer. Churches that make giving compulsory for members need to have a read of 2 Corinthians. Because Paul says explicitly, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. God loves it when people give cheerfully, freely, decisively, because it mirrors the way God acts freely, decisively, out of an overflow of his love. Equally, I'd say the churches uh, that push 10% as the only real way of giving are bordering on compulsion. Now, 10% of tithing is something we find a lot in the Old, Old Testament. Um, and in the New Testament, it's, it's more about generosity uh, as a whole and giving as a kind of grace and giving as a kind of response to God's grace. I think generosity will look different for each person. For some, it may well mean 10%. For others, more. For others, less. And for some, it will mean 0% because they're struggling financially and they need to feed their kids. And that's real life, isn't it? Now, not every minister or church will agree with me on this point, but I am convinced that God does not want us to go into debt in order to keep giving generously. There have been times in my life when I've stopped giving to church or charities because I knew I would get into debt by doing so. That's me being very honest and very vulnerable for you. And if you're in debt right now, there's no shame in that. Life is complicated, and I know that as well. But there are ways of getting out of debt if you're feeling overwhelmed by it. And you might want to speak to me or to Mike when he's back as well about that. Mike and I are always here to talk with you if that's you. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by, by that, don't, don't um, talk to someone about it. Seeing as we're talking about generosity in a broader sense, it's worth highlighting as well, but there are, um, there are ways 
that we might end up actually getting into a kind of emotional debt where we're burning out because we've given so much of ourselves away there's just nothing left. A kind of emotional debt. Debt and burnout are dangerous and that's why I say compulsion is a killer. Compulsion is a killer. Another way compulsion is a killer is when we're generous in a mechanical way uh, and our heart just isn't really in it. And of course, there'll be times when you, you don't feel like being generous and sometimes you just have to keep going on and keep plodding on even when you don't feel it. But actually, if over a long period of time you're just giving because that's what you've always done it's a mechanical way, or if you're giving because it's begrudging, uh, it's, begr- it's a begrudging thing, that perhaps when we do that, we've lost sight of a generous, generous God who gives freely for love's sake. The final thing I wish I was taught about generosity, remember the poor. Remember the poor. In verse 9 of our reading, Paul quotes a psalm that talks about those who trust in God being uh, secure enough in their trust of God to scatter their gifts to the poor. And if you were to read uh, that psalm, you would notice a link between being blessed and giving to the poor. They kind of go together. If you're blessed, you give to the poor. And if you give to the poor, you'll somehow be blessed, even if it's not necessarily in a material way. There's a link there in Psalms. And throughout the scriptures we find that God is on the side of the poor. God is on the side of the oppressed. God is on the side of the marginalised. Whatever we do, we can't forget the poor. Jesus tells his parables in Matthew 25, if you want to look it up after the service. Jesus tells a parable about sheep and goats and at the end explains that whatever we do for the least of those in the world, we actually in some way do for Christ. That when we serve the least, we're serving Christ in some mysterious way. Now, as a church, this church, Wellington Baptist Church, money is tight because for the last two and a half years we've had a ministry team of two ministers rather than one. And as a church, we could have decided to stop giving to BMS and to Home Mission. BMS is the Baptist Missionary Society, and Home Mission is um, is part of the Baptist Union that supports struggling churches and plants new ones. We could have chosen to stop, because that would have helped uh, us to have two ministers for a longer period of time than we might be able to. But we've not forgotten that principle, remember the poor. Remember the poor. Whatever you do, will you remember the poor? When you're eating and drinking, will you remember the poor? When you're out and you're shopping, will you remember the poor? When you're wondering, what do I do with my life? What's my calling? Will you remember the poor? When you're making a budget, will you remember the poor? When you're seeking to be generous, Will you remember the poor? So there you go. There are the five things I wish I was taught about generosity. Generosity starts with God. You reap what you sow, the right way you might think. You have to decide. Compulsion is a killer. And remember the poor. One last thing as I finish. Behind every act of generosity that has ever been shown to you, there is a loving God that has been reaching out to you. Perhaps today might be the day you turn towards that God and say thank you. Turn towards that God and say I love you back. Because that God has been reaching out to you again and again and again through the generosity of others. Every moment right from birth that you've been showing generosity, that's God reaching out to you. Perhaps today, you might return and say thank you to God. You might want to say I love you to God, perhaps even for the first time. Amen.